Hello, everybody. Uh, today, I'm going to be talking about implementing a enterprise-wide API governance strategy with the help of .NET Core and Postman Enterprise. So let's take a look at just a basic .NET Core controller. This is where all the magic happens. It's where your developers are creating brand new APIs. You can see we have a GET request here. Uh, we have another GET request called GET Without Summary. So uh, let's understand how the open API specification is actually generated from these controllers in this code first.NET landscape. So if we go to the startup file, we can see a few important lines. This add swagger gen is actually what's using the swashbuckle nougat package to compile all those controllers and XML documentation in order to generate an open API specification. We also have the the use Swagger and the use Swagger UI extension methods, which will actually allow you to host this uh, Swagger JSON file in the Swagger UI when it's deployed to a live server. So let's look at the add Swagger gen. We'll see uh, what it's doing. We're actually adding some information about the Swagger uh, to the Swagger document, like the title of the API, as well as the contact information. We're adding the security definition as well as the security scheme. And so, the question is, when you're running a large enterprise with thousands of APIs, how do you actually regulate? What do these open API specifications look like? So what I'm gonna go through quickly is just the, uh, the support for Spectral in Postman Enterprise. So you can actually create a governance rule that applies to all the APIs uploaded in your team. Spectral is just an open source uh, linting engine for JSON documents, and the open API specification is a JSON document. So by writing these rules, what you can do is you can basically align all those teams building APIs to one common pattern and common rule sets for your organization. So now jumping back into the code, how does this work when a developer is writing code? Because in a code first world, uh, you, you don't have that open API specification until you've actually pushed to GitHub. So what, how do we accomplish doing this locally is Let's take a look at the weather controller. Uh, I've defined via the uh, data annotation attributes, the producer's response type annotation, which basically converts to open API and says, you know, for this uh, status code, I want to return this model or this component, right? So you can see I have that set up on uh, my endpoint here, as well as I have an endpoint called get without summary, where I've enabled XML documentation on this as well. So this will be translated to open API also. So let me do two things. What I want to do is I want to remove the summary from this endpoint. And there's actually a rule on my team that says this endpoint needs a summary. So let's see that violation happen. I'm also going to remove this produce response type error. So what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm about to commit to uh, GitHub. I'm ready to push my changes. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just going to run my unit test to do one final check before this, before I push. So let's run these unit tests. And you can see that there was a build started. It's going to build all the projects, but there's something special in the unit test project that actually connects to Postman and allows me to fail my build when there is governance and security rule check violations. So let's take a look at this. We see that there's one error return from uh, the Postman CLI. Uh, and what we're doing is we're actually linting this open uh, API specification. So let's find where that error is. And I see all of my operations need summaries, right? This is exactly what we talked about. Um, now, let me add that summary back in uh, as well as remove that error. And let's run my unit tests again. So theoretically, my operation has a summary, it should pass, right? I should be able to run the unit tests of this. So you see, I have no errors now on my linting rules. So from Visual Studio, we've actually called Postman Enterprise, checked and saw if we were in violation of our team's rules before we even push the code to GitHub. So that's very important. Another important thing is that if I go to my Git changes, you'll notice something very interesting, right? I have modified some things on my controller. What have I modified? I, re I removed the error res produce response type. And the question is, how does that reflect in the open API specification that gets generated, right? Now we have access to diff the Swagger JSON file. 
So you see, just by removing that produces response type annotation, I've gotten rid of the entire 500 information, 500 status code information about what was returned in my open API specification. So that's just an example of how you modify the open API specification with code, right? And there's two ways to do this is on the controller where that is defined, as well as in the program file, you can actually add any custom open API specifications you want using the operation filter interface, as well as the document filter interface. The document filter will apply to the entire document. The operation will apply to all endpoints. So let's take a look at how we actually accomplish this. If I go to the unit test project, I'm allowed, I can basically do this in four lines of code. I restore the .NET command line tools. I use the swashbuckle ASP.NET Core CLI NuGet package to create a Swagger JSON file locally in my, in my main project directory. Next, what I do is I log into the Postman CLI using an API key that's defined in my system environment variables. So there's only one secret you need to set up locally and uh, you can run it. Next is I actually lint this local JSON document that was produced by Swashbuckle according to the rules in my team. That will either fail the build or pass the build. I'm able to run my unit tests and I'm able to successfully push the Git. So this was uh, setting up an enterprise governance strategy with .NET Core in under seven minutes. Hope you all enjoyed. Thank you very much.